All right, let's find the surface area, outside surface area and the volume of the storage tank. Uh, so I think this one, right? I mean, we're in the theorem of Poppins and Goldness section, but I think you can see that this would be a good candidate because we create this by taking something and rotating it about uh, this axis right down the middle. Uh, so let's, we, aren't, we aren't given any dimensions of that little thing on top, so look, we can just kind of neglect it. So I would say that this is created by taking this line and this line, right? Pretend that's pretend that's perfectly vertical. Taking those two lines and rotating them. Uh, sometimes you might need to include the bottom, but uh, we want the outside surface area. The that, you know the bottom. I think this is all kind of ground right here, so I don't think that we would include that in the surface area. So. I think we take these two lines. Let me draw them. Let me let's take this green line and let's take this blue line and find the outside surface. Right, that creates the outside surface area. So the surface area is summation of theta R L. Right, the surface area is the summation of. Let's look at the green one. Theta is two pi. R Hmm, let me think about that. I'll, I'll come back to that. The L, oh, well, what is the length of this? Now, be careful. Uh, this dimension is 15. This dimension is 4. So this would be 15 squared, 4 squared. Take the square root. You know, so whatever that is, um, that hypotenuse of this triangle. The hypotenuse of this triangle. Now, the, whoops, I take square root right there. Now, the R. The R is, all right, where's the centroid? The cent Don't overthink this one. This is just a line. It's not a triangle, right? This is just a line, and the center of that line would be right there. Same amount above and below, same amount left and to the right. And I want the perpendicular, dis the distance perpendicular to the rotating axis, so that's that right here. Don't overthink this. It, it is seven and a half, right? It is... 7.5 right there. All right, so that is a theta RL for the green line. How about the theta RL for the blue line? Theta is 2 pi. You know, you could probably factor this out and only multiply it once. That'd probably be smart, uh, smarter than what I'm doing, but um, I'm, I'm going to just do them all separately. I'm going to come back to the R. Because I think that's the hardest part. The L is just the L. This one is 30 feet. So this is 30 right there. Now the R is the distance to the centroid. Where's the centroid? Well, it's just a line. It's, it's right there. What is this distance right there? That is a full 15 right there. All right. So there. There we go. That is the surface area. The surface area is 3560. Uh, it is an area uh, that should be feet squared. And if I would kept up with my units here, feet, feet, it would be feet squared. All right. So there's the outside surface area. Sometimes it'll tell you to do you include the bottom, exclude the bottom. Uh, but if it's uh, a building, right, and the bottom is the ground, then I think it's clear that you would not include that in the outside surface area of that building, right? Just this green line and this blue line. Now for the surface area, let's redraw it. Let's don't let's don't reuse these these green line and blue line, these R's right here. Let's redraw it. Uh, what? How do I create the volume? I create the volume not by just this line but by this triangle and this rectangle. Let me draw this one, maybe use different colors or something. But I would say that this volume is created by taking that pink triangle and taking this purple rectangle and rotating those two shapes a full two pi. All right, so let's let's do that. Let's get that. All right, so the volume is summation of theta R A. So the volume would be, let's look at this pink. I'm going to draw this in pink. Let's look at this pink triangle. Uh, we, we do rotate it a full 2 pi. Let me come back to this R. What is the area of that triangle? The area of a triangle is 1 half base 
times height, so that's the area. What is the R? The R is the distance to the centroid. Where is the centroid of a triangle? Y'all remember this, right? It's two-thirds to one side, one-third to, to one side. It's closer here to the left, right? If this whole thing is 15, then this would be 5, 5, 5. It is just 5 feet away from the rotating axis, the centroid, right? Very, very different from this one that is 7 because this one is a line that creates the surface area as opposed to this one is the area. This is a triangle that creates the volume. Okay, so now let's look at this purple uh, rectangle. It goes a full 2 pi. I'll come back to the R. The, the area of a rectangle is base times height. And the R, well, where is the centroid? The centroid is right in the middle. So the R would be that distance 7.5, 7.5 feet. All right, so that whole volume would be 22,100 cubic feet. I may have rounded that to, th to three significant figures, um, but 22,100 uh, cubic feet, that would be the volume. Now, this problem doesn't ask for it, so the, I, I would stop right there, box those in, Check, check, you know, I've got it. I've answered the question. But sometimes the problem uh, asks for not the volume, but the weight. Weight. And it gives you the specific weight, the specific weight of the... Um, inside material, I should say that a little bit better, uh, but let's say it's filled with some material and it asks you for the weight of the material inside of that, right? How can we use Theorem of Poppins and Goldness to find the weight? Well, we can't. We use the Theorem of Poppins and Goldness to find the volume and then we use the volume and the specific weight to find the weight. So, for example... Let's say it was filled, completely filled, with a material that has a specific weight, gamma, of 115 pounds per cubic foot. So this might be the specific weight of something inside of that storage tank. Now, I bet you can, y'all are smart enough, right? If we know it's 115 pounds per cubic foot and we have 22,000 cubic feet of it, wouldn't we multiply those together? Yeah, yeah. The units tell you what you should do, uh, but if we want a formula, the formula is the weight equals the specific weight times the volume. The weight equals the specific weight times the volume. So we get the volume from Theorem of Papas and Goldenus, and they give us the specific weight, then we can find the total weight, W. So the weight would be 115 pounds per foot cubed times 22,100 feet cubed. Yep, there we go. Units, a very large number, 2.54 times 10 to the 6 pounds, right? Or 2,540 kips uh, might be our weight. So, Sometimes the problem isn't asking for the volume. Sometimes the problem is asking for the weight. But first, you need to get the volume. Multiply it times the specific weight to get the weight. You know, you might see a problem and say, why is this asking for the weight? Theorem of Poisson Goldenness doesn't give us the weight. No, it gives us the volume. Then we take that volume, multiply it times the specific weight, and uh, that gives us the um, weight.